Hello, and welcome to The Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and The Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have had an association with Oshkosh or the surrounding Fox Cities area. Hey, Kosh listeners, how are you doing? Uh, we are here again on a beautiful morning. Um, can I just say, even though that I know we are in November and we are really close to Thanksgiving, I'm still not feeling this cold. I know. I know I'm wrong because as someone who is born and raised Wisconsin, I shouldn't complain, but I'm going to complain. I ain't got no problems with that because I do not. It is wrong. It's just wrong. I was out. I was out yesterday and I had to go to an event at night and it said 23 degrees. And I was like, OK, 23 degrees now for some of us, that's that's cold. But for Wisconsinites, like I'm like, that's reasonable. I can I can work with 23 degrees. You know, I got I got almost 50 years of this in this game. And I went out there but that windshield wasn't 23. The windshield was a lot colder than 23 and I was like, "Good lord." I don't think that's fair. I don't think the windshield is fair. Like, can we get a redo on the windshield? Like, if you give me a temperature, just give me the real temperature, not not the temperature and in a windshield. Just give me the windshield temperature. Like, what does it really feel like? Like, I think that's the one. <laughs> that it should be done. I'm just saying, y'all. All right. I'm done. I'm done griping. That's my weather gripe for the week. So let me just tell you once again, I do not know how this happens, but I will share how this one happened. Why do I get these amazing guests? I get such, such amazing guests and I'm super excited about this week's guest. And, um, once again, this time I actually took the time to ask them, how do you properly enunciate? Because, you know, I wasn't going to slaughter the name up, but I'll tell you why I wasn't going to slaughter the name up. Um, so without further ado, this week's guest is Juliet Sturkins. Did I get that right? You got it right. Yes. That is such a win. Bruh. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that I didn't really want to get Juliet's name wrong is because Juliet is from somewhere else and I will let her share that. And I figured, you know what, if I, if I slaughter our fellow Americans names, that's one thing, but <laughs> I'm not going to slaughter our international guests day. Thank you. Thank I, you. And you know, you're going to have foreigners listening to your podcast now from now on. Because I have family in the Netherlands, in Australia, in Germany, and they're all going to be listening to your podcast. The cash has just gone to international. Yes. That is huge. Yes. Bruh. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, Juliet, um, can you please share a little something about yourself and what's your connection to the Kosh and the surrounding Fox Cities area? Yeah, how does a girl from the Netherlands end up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, right? Actually, Facts. 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 Okay, <laughs> well, um, I met my husband in the pool in the Netherlands, learning how to do scuba diving. And that was 1976. And it took me about five years to decide that I wanted to move to the United States. Actually, I decided a little bit earlier, but it took a while to get it all arranged. And moved here in 1981, got married first in the Netherlands, moved to the United States, and I was accepted in the graduate program at UW Oshkosh. Oh! And that's how I ended up in Oshkosh. That, okay, that's a journey. Um, what was that graduate program? Uh, audiology. A phenomenal program was uh, under Dr. Jack Kyle, audiologist, and um, it was a very small audiology program, very personal, very practical. They had phenomenal sites where students could go for their internships or externships, or whatever you want to call it. And um, my husband found work at Oshkosh Corp, and we never left. So it's been 41 years, a little over 41 years that I've been here. Oh, how, how was the transition? From the Netherlands. Well, when you're a newlywed, you don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Facts. Well, you, you do care. But, um, you know, I was newly married and trying to adjust to married life and then uh, went to grad school um, by bus or by car. 
and um, it, it, when you go to school, you quickly meet people who are like-minded, so I made some great friends, and um, 1983, I graduated and found work in Oshkosh, and in 1988, while six months pregnant, I bought an audiology practice. Oh. I don't recommend that to anybody. What? <laughs> no. I know, I know. Um, but that meant uh, right here in the Oshkosh Clinic on CP Avenue, I owned an audiology practice with a friend, audiologist, Doreen Jensen. Okay. Yeah. Um, how long uh, do you still own that? No, no. Uh, 1988, I purchased it. In 2012, I um, gave it up to do what I'm doing right now. I do volunteer work for the American Hearing Loss Association. It's called Hearing Loss Association of America, HLAA. Okay. And, yep. I have two children. Um, I have a daughter who's 34 who lives in Australia. I have a son who's going to be 29 who lives in the Netherlands. Oh. And here we are. So you're in Oshkosh and they're childless. They're international. Yes. Okay. That's fantastic. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, if I can ask, what did they do? Um, so our daughter was a special ed teacher. Phenomenal. Oh, Great man. special ed teacher. Took her a while to um, get her degree. Um, but ended up given an offer to go to Australia to work on a small project. Uh, a group was building an electric sports airplane, kind of an airplane kit. Okay. She met them at EAA. Oh, there you go. And literally within a month and a half, packed up all her stuff, put stuff in storage, mom and dad's storage, by the way. Bruh. And... <laughs> And she uh, moved to Australia. That was right before the pandemic. Oh, so this is well, recent. fairly recent. Recent. So we haven't seen her since um, August, September 2019. Okay. Um, but very happy. And um, I think she's looking to make a life there. And of course, I, I, I recognize that, right? I did the same thing. I moved away from my family. Um, but the world is a lot smaller than it is, than it was then. You know, right. it is now a lot smaller. Yeah. And hey. then I, my son, um, both, by the way, are Oshkosh West graduates. Oh, okay. Swim team members, you know, so I'm a swim team mom. Um, but she, but he moved to the Netherlands to get his doctorate in engineering mm. and just graduated and now has a Dutch girlfriend, so... It's looking more and more like he will be staying in the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really cool. Yeah. Yes, that's cool. And I mean, so they were they were basically born and raised Oshkosh yeah. and then decided uh, we're going to go explore. Raised Dutch. I spoke Dutch at home pretty much. Yeah. I was uh, quite successful with my daughter learning to speak Dutch. Okay. But my son was perhaps a little bit more resistant. It was also harder. Bruh. I yeah. get that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the good thing is they have that, at least that ear for foreign languages. So, you know, Joel speaks Dutch pretty fluently. Sounds like, you know, a 50-year-old Dutch woman um, because she learned Dutch from me. Um, and my son now is learning Dutch living in the Netherlands. That's pretty sweet. I always wanted to catch another language, but I'm not going to lie. Me and Spanish class, we didn't get along like that. Can I give you some advice? I'm, I'm open to it. You're absolutely. open to it? Yeah, absolutely. Have you heard of Duolingo? No. I got the whole family doing, lingo, doing, doing Duolingo. It's a free app on your phone. Okay that you can learn a second language. And so my husband's studying Dutch, Joelle's studying Dutch, her boyfriend in Australia studying Dutch, and uh, my sisters are all refreshing their French and you know, practicing Italian and Spanish. Um, and I think you'll be surprised how quickly you'll pick it up. Duolingo. Duolingo. 
Okay. I'm going to check that out. And actually, what we will do is we'll put a link in the podcast notes for that. And, uh, you it's know, a fun app. if you share these things, we have to share it with the Kosh listeners. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fun app. I'm with it. Yeah. I think um, being the ability to be bilingual just expands your ability to connect. At least be able to meet them. I don't want to say halfway, but at least be able to say thank you and please and do you have or can you help me find or, you know, simple things like that. I'm Yeah, but I'm just thinking like uh, even on a more like global level or just a, a, a person to person level, just the ability to know to communicate in multiple ways is huge. Like I just think um, it gives you a different worldview. Um yeah. It's great for crossword puzzles. Oh, I don't mess with those. Those are um, those are a little scary for me. Bruh. They're, they're, well, I'm just saying. I haven't mastered the English language yet, so. <laughs> you sound good to me, you know. <laughs> All right. We are ready to jump into the first segment. Juliet, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. The first segment is called What in the World is Going On With? And what in the world is going on with is where you start with that phrase and you tell us what is on your mind. What in the world is going on with these huge three-page ads for hearing aids in the newspaper? Bruh. Ooh, break that down. Do you get the newspaper? Um, No, 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 I don't. Uh, here's what I do. I There's one news, there's a paper that comes free. Uh huh. Herald, and then there is, and I read that, and then there I get a digital paper. Uh, I get the Post Crescent digitally. Okay, so you probably don't see all the ads, and it's not just the Post Crescent. It's not just the Oshkosh Northwestern. It's all over the country, but there's these huge three-page ads in the, or sometimes more inserts in the newspaper for hearing aids hearing aid advertising, right? Yeah. Um, and if you've been getting the newspaper for 40 years, like I have, um, this is probably something from the last 10, 15 years or so. But I really think it makes people believe that it's all about the gadget, right? The hearing aid. It's all about the technology inside the hearing aid that's going to help you hear better. For the listeners, I'm an audiologist, so my focus is really on trying to help people hear better. That's what I do for the Hearing Loss Association. And I'm just not quite sure of that kind of advertising really projects the right message for people who are either dealing with hearing loss or wondering if they should send their mother somewhere to, to get tested for hearing um, you know, hearing loss is, it's not a matter of if you're going to get hearing loss. It's for most of us, it's a matter of when you're going to get hearing loss. Oh, yeah. And this is something, like, I can think of a lot of different um, communities that deal with this, like uh, friends and family who are factory workers and being by those machines all those years, or um, my veterans community, um, hunters, Yes. Um, this is Wisconsin. Yeah. And so, yeah, that, that hearing loss is serious. Actually, it's something I actually, if I'm having a conversation with something, it's something I actually take the time to look in to see if someone's wearing some type of hearing device. Um, so just count me as one of those people who I thought it was about the technology. So why isn't it about the technology? Um, or at least from the ad, ad, uh, the ad standpoint. Because it seems like hearing hearing aid advertisements always seem it's very much like any other techno technology. It's it's advertising the newest, the better. It's smaller. It does this thing. It's Bluetooth. It connects to your TV. Like I I've seen them and I've actually paid attention to them as you can tell. Yes, yes, and there are some really nifty things that hearing aids can do, um, but. In reality, it's very much dependent on the ability of the person with hearing, uh, with the hearing loss, and no two hearing losses are alike. 
So there are people whose hearing loss is of the kind where basically it's making the sound softer and a hearing aid is going to make that sound louder, making it easier for the person to hear. But a hearing aid can never make the hearing as normal as eyeglasses make your vision normal. Oh, oh. okay. That's a good comparison. That's a, And it's a, it's a comparison that people overlook. Um, They think that getting a new hearing aid or a more technologically advanced hearing aid is going to solve that problem, and it won't. What technology can do is, for example, you have trouble hearing the television. Well, with a little Bluetooth transmitter on your TV, you can get the sound from the TV right in the hearing aid. Right. And that, of course, gives you really good clarity, really good understanding. We still won't make it the way it was when you were 25, but we'll make it a lot better. But if that person has hearing loss that is affecting their understanding, and in effect, their hearing sounds muffled. So the hearing sounds a little bit like this. I, for the listeners at home, I just put my hand in front of my mouth. It's not your radio that's having a problem. <laughs> right. But, but. I mean, if your if your hearing loss means that some words are clear and other words aren't, that hearing aid can no, can really not restore that ability, and that problem is worse when there's background noise, when there's distance involved, and when there's reverberation. And as an audio podcaster, those are your enemies too. Facts. All I have to do is make a little background noise for the listeners at home, and they're going to have trouble hearing me. Right. Okay. Oh, if I move away from the microphone. Oh, we lost our guest. We lost our guest. But the guest... The guest is back. (laughs) Can you edit this out for the listeners at home? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Um, but distance is the enemy of any hearing aid, right? Right. So if the advertising is focused on all on technology and not on the ability of the person, him or herself, or on the ability of the professional to really do what's best for the listener, it, I think it sets up consumers for disappointment it makes sense it makes a lot of sense yeah and okay so let me just tie back through so why the three-page ads you think i don't know i think maybe bigger is better um you know it draws attention um does it take three pages to to make somebody actually give it an opportunity for the new technology or hearing aids it must otherwise they wouldn't keep doing it i would agree with that somewhere they're getting results yeah yeah but you know what my work and my work um is work around the country educating consumers about how to be better hearing care consumers how to buy hearing aids in effect Mm. um I think the consumer would be much better off going to the library, right? getting a book. There's a new book out, Hearing Loss for Dummies. I actually know the author. It's a Dr. Franklin from the university, or from Johns Hopkins. Read a book. Ask satisfied other users. You know, do your homework. Do your due diligence before you're going to spend thousands of dollars. Okay. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Oh, no, no, no. But we've got more opportunities. For other soapboxes? That's right. Cool. That's right. It's the cash. We we got opportunities to share. Okay. So, um, my what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with Twitter and Elon Musk? Because you know, I I just like I've been fascinated with this. Just okay, look, richest man in the world, like 
he doesn't have billions. Like he has billions upon billions, right? I think I think I saw a number that's like he's worth like two hundred billion or something crazy like that, but, right? But forty four billion is a big portion of yes. that amount, right? Yep. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, forty four billion would be close to a quarter, right? I drive home when I leave my one dollar coupon on the counter, you know. And then this guy spends this kind of money. $44 billion. And I'm a latecomer to Twitter, but I really got hooked on it during the elections. I'm just refreshing, and I'm checking, and I'm looking at projections, and I know it's not good for my health, but I did. And so now I feel like I can't trust it anymore. Mm. That's interesting. All I was going to, my whole what in the world is going on with is like, how do you become this super brilliant business person? You have, you've amassed the most of a ridiculous amount of wealth and you buy this company and you, that's for, you just don't know what you're doing. He has no clue. No clue. Right. And, and, and it's, and here's the funny thing. You bought a company that is built on social media. So Every move you make is going to play out publicly on social media. And he's bold enough to make his own statements. So then it's not even people gossiping about it. Like we can take his own quotes. My favorite is, you know, you can talk about anything on Twitter, but me, (laughs) what is that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Democracy is great. As long as you do what I want you to do. That's right. You know, so my, my other one is like, how do you go to your, how do you write a letter to your entire company and basically tell them, look, you're going to have to start working 80 hours a week or you take this three month severage package. Like, I'm sure the people that work at Twitter, they're like, they're tech people. Tech people are always in demand right now. Like, did Elon Musk not look at the job market of the U.S. right now? Like, people need people. I know, and, and and especially with these skills, right? What I'm just I'm so fascinated. Like at the end of the day, I'm sure it's going to come out fine eventually, or is it? I don't know. Because I'm, it's, I think there's people ready to kind of jump the ship. There's something called Mastodon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, but I see some of the people I follow are. You know, saying, follow me, or why don't you join me here? Let's try this out. Yes. Um, it needs, you know what, it must need a good competitor because that would change yes. the landscape. Yes. Um, there's a, all right, so I hate to admit this, but there's a dark side of me that kind of hopes that this drastically falls apart. And the reason I want to see that is because I want to see I want a situation where someone who's amassed that level of wealth does something so like, because you know that they feel they can do anything, right? Like there's no, but I kind of am almost like, I want to see the mistake made where it costs them, even though it's never going to change their lifestyle or hurt how they live, but to lose 40 billion will be a tale to be told for many. Like, I just want to, I kind of just want to see it. It's called schadenfreude. Oh, break that down. That's um, um, a German term. It's kind of making fun of other, others, people's misery. And, and I think we all, not maybe not all, but many of us like the idea that um, he's going to lose that kind of money, and um, these other people are going to find different organizations where they will be able to share their ideas and their um, communication, where they can communicate freely. Yeah, I'm not cheering for like the people that work for Twitter to lose their jobs or anything no. like that. By no. no means, and I'm I'm not. I what I am saying though is it. It to me, it's this lesson um, of someone who may feel like they can't be taught lessons anymore, and not like I know Elon Musk. So I'm, I'm just saying this broadly because it just seems like for someone who already owns big businesses, everything about all of these moves, I don't think he looked at Twitter as another business or that it was going to be a different time 
type of business because this business is built on people. People and trust. And, Who do you trust right, in and, what they're saying? Right, and interaction and communication yep. Yep. and what it is. And so, like, no, that doesn't fit the model of building spaceships or or electric cars. Like, you're you're dealing with people. And people, you... I don't think you can uh, make the same business decisions when that is when that is who your consumer or actually what actually what your product is. Yeah, and my guess is the best people are leaving first or have already left. Oh yeah, the people who are left now are the ones who don't see a way out, and that, they can't carry this whole ship by themselves. Uh, you know, what, or steer it. What I read somewhere was the people who are really staying are the people who are stuck by visas. <sighs> Right, they yeah. they've got work visas and they That's they can't just, just leave. It's very unfortunate. Right. Yep. So, um, Twitter, Twitter. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that that one. I and I am eager to see how it continues to play out. Gosh, listeners, if you know something I don't know, if you got an opinion on this, <laughs> or if you think I'm wrong, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at askthekash at gmail dot com. I'm just I'm so curious see how this all plays out because so far it's not getting better like i could see if there was one big mistake and then there's starting to be a course correction but yeah. now it feels like he's unraveled it and now you, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna pull back together like it's like a spring you know where spring would pull back and it now this seems like a spring that's been pulled too far and now it's never gonna be a spring again nope no, and the best people, if the best people have already left, how do you build this back up? You're not going to get them back because you've lost that trust. Yep. yep. So, talent. Talent is particular. All right. Ready for the next segment? I'm ready. All right. Next segment is word associations. Uh, this is where I'm going to throw a word at you and you tell me what comes to mind. We might ask for a little background. All right. First word, our universal word, the word that connects us all, food. Well, and this is where I'm not going to be maybe like many of your other podcast invitees, uh, invitees, however you say that word. I'm still Dutch. I don't always know how to pronounce each word. I'm not much for going out to eat. No? I am. I, re I really like to cook. Oh, oh don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like to eat. <laughs> it's just that I really like to eat my own food. And so I love to do barbecue. Well, I have a husband who is a really good barbecuer. Um, I'm a recent Instant Pot fan. Oh, uh, love the Instant Pot. Oh, me too. Me too. How can people live without an Instant Pot? Look, they won't once they have one. Exactly. And I, okay, so this is what happened. I'm doing lectures in Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. And as we are driving to different meetings and different events, I'm in the car with a woman who's a huge Instant Pot fan. Okay. And the other woman in the car is resisting. Oh. And I'm just kind of in the middle going, Instant, what's an instant pot, right? Never right. seen it, never heard of it. And so every time we got back in the car, she would have another instant pot story. Mm. And after that week, a super busy week, I'm doing lectures, I'm doing all kinds of events, and I get home, and in front of my door is a big package. Oh. And I open it up. And it's an instant pot, a thank you instant pot from this friend in Eugene, Oregon. I'm going to have to cheer that on. That it's is just, fantastic. You know, and um, I've actually since sent an instant pot to my daughter in Australia, because <laughs> how can you live without an instant pot? Mm -hmm. um, I make yogurt. I make beef brisket that is to die for. Facts. And um, I have, you know, I can maybe share a recipe in your um, podcast notes. Um, I do uh, uh, make great day. soups, love. I mean, but if you don't make yogurt in your Instant Pot, you haven't lived. Oh. I make it with 
like half and half and whole milk. Mm, okay. It's just wonderful. I mean, for that reason alone, for yogurt alone, I would buy an Instant Pot now. So if the listeners are into yogurt, email me. I'll send you my yogurt recipe. Let me tell you, the, uh, me and the Instant Pot have had this beautiful relationship ever since multiple Christmases ago. And people know. I... I'm an Instapot guru. I do not play around with the Instapot. I am amazing at Instapot ting. And actually, the whole thing started because my wife did not like me in the kitchen. And the Instapot is the one thing she will allow me to do because I can't make a mess in the Instapot because you cook everything in the Instapot. That's right. You know, I fry in the Instapot and then I stir it up in the Instapot and then I pressure cook it in the Instapot and I can serve it almost out of the Instapot, right? So because of that, I became pretty good at this so i do soups in the instapot to various types of chinese food um if you do not know if you don't know i'm going to give you the secret the secret is this website and the website is called press your luck pressure your luck cooking now jeffrey and i'm going to talk about jeffrey like we're friends because we are as far as I'm concerned. I found Jeffrey when I first got my Instapot and went out there and Jeffrey gave me every recipe with video. Now, it's different. Like recipes in a book are nice, but at the end of the day you're stuck with a lot of questions. At least I am, right? Cuz I want to do it right and so I've got questions like when you say cut this this way, what does that mean? What does it look like? Like how small is that? How much is that? You know, with these videos, Jeffrey Jeffrey made it easy, and, I, and I'm and i not going to lie. I've probably made at least 20, 30, maybe even 40, like, recipes from Jeffrey. Jeffrey is the man. www.pressureyourluckcooking.com? Press, yep, pressureyourluckcooking.com. I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. We'll put that in the podcast notes also. Ah, so, ah, wonderful. I'm, I'm right there with you as far as Bruh. being one of those Instapot advocates. Great. Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk now. That's a, that's a whole offline Instapot conversation. Yes. Yeah, I want to see your frying thing because I don't have the frying portion. Oh, no, no, no. It's just you, you have it. It's just the one button where you just put some Stir- oil in the bottom. Oh, yeah, I, I use that. But there is some type of top you can buy yes. that has a heating element. Yes. I don't have that. I and don't I don't know if either. it's worth buying or not. And I was hoping that you were going to show me. Oh, no, no, no. But I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And what I did instead was I bought the other Instapot device. There's another one. Oh. It's a whole standalone. And you have room for this in your kitchen? No, of course I don't. <laughs> they sit under the cabinets. I pull them out when they need. The Instapot doesn't even sit out when it's supposed to sit no, out. But no. you know, it's no. one of those things. But once yeah. again. It's a have thing. You got a have thing. Yes. Yep. Okay. Love yep. that. In Dutch, we call that a habiting. You got to have it. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm going to learn. I'm learning Dutch today, y'all. <laughs> Cocktails or beer? See, I'm going to be different again. Oh, well, you know. I really prefer a nice, full-bodied red wine. Mm. Um, and th- the reason is I'm a cheap drunk. Mm. Meaning, right. you know, one glass and I'm basically under the table and my husband will um, agree with that. And so if I spill, if I use up all my alcohol and that first drink then i don't get to drink anything else during dinner Mm, so but but i was just in peru other story we won't go there but i learned how to drink piscos what is it and it's pisco it's some alcoholic drink from chile and peru um lime juice egg white and sugar oh i mean come on you know, and they shake it up so when you get it in your glass, it has a little white foam, like it almost looks like beer, little thinner head, yellowish drink, and it's delicious. There's a place here, right around the corner, that makes piscos. Well, they don't call it that. Actually, I think it's a, they they form it in a type of old fashioned slash whiskey drink, but it has the egg whites and the foam and some sugar. 
right over here at no who is becoming my new church at Jensen's. At Jensen's. At Jensen's. Oh, I'll have to go try and out, see you if it's might. as good as the one that I had in Peru. Well, it's probably a little different, but what I'm going to say is um, as a person, of, as a Wisconsinite, if we don't do anything well, we do cocktails well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Bruh. Okay. Um, concert. I'm one of these annoying people who wants to go to a concert and know all the words to the songs that are being sung. Bruh. I what? Know. Well, I, I restrain myself, but so probably the most magical concert that I attended was maybe three or four weeks after 9-11 with Barry Manilow in Milwaukee. Oh. And it was just awesome. Um, well, I think, you know, after 9-11, we felt like we were all in this together. We were all affected. Um, the whole world reacted to what happened in our uh, country um, with all these airplanes. And Barry Manilow felt that in the concert, and, and he kind of brought in some American music he had, People sing along. It was just really awesome. And I got to sing along. And you got to sing along. And I got to sing along. And it fed right into the part that you enjoy. Yes. But I have another story about a concert. Um, I saw Paul McCartney in concert in Milwaukee. Bruh. Maybe 20 years ago or so. Um, and, and that's when, I mean, it's history, right? You're, you know, I grew up in the Netherlands just at the tail end of the Beatles in the sixties when I came of age and became aware of music and, um, seeing Paul McCartney in concert was absolutely awesome, but I wasn't going to go to a concert and not wear earplugs because, you know, I had earplugs in my purse and it was loud. It was incredibly loud. So I wore these earplugs. They're called musician's earplugs. And you can either have them custom made or you can have uh, kind of one size fits most earplugs, but they're good. And what's good about them is they, they lower the level of the sound, but they don't distort it. They don't just roll off um, all the high frequencies. The, the sound stays brilliant, stays clear. It's just quieter. So we've been watching Paul McCartney now for an hour, hour and a half. And my husband thought, boy, I just don't think that the crowd is enthusiastic enough for this concert. We think it's awesome. <laughs> and so he pulled out one of his earplugs and it was like, whoa, the crowd was right there. But these earplugs, of course, taper that crowd noise as well. Um, but that brings me to a topic that I think is important. I think people ought to take care of their ears. Be aware that they should protect their ears. Going to a concert where if you come home and your ears are still ringing when you're in bed, you've overdone it. It's been too loud. If you're mowing the lawn, if you're sighting in your rifle, I mean, all these things that involve noise has an accumulative effect on your ears. Right. Um, where do you get these types of... I got them, of course, at conferences. I go to audiology conferences. Um, but if you Google musicians, earplugs, they pop right up. On the web, a company called Atomotic Research sells them. They're called ER10s or ER15s or ER20s. Um, the Are higher they... the number, the more protection there is. And if you're a musician, I mean, you ought to have custom-made earplugs, and you go to an audiologist and order them right Are there. Are they um, Are they affordable? So the musician earplugs, I'm going to say probably for a pair, around 20 bucks. Oh, I Something think that, like that. I think that falls into affordable. Yeah, that's an affordable range. Custom earplugs, that's a different matter. Right. So custom earplugs, you're probably looking at $75 to $90 per ear mold. They have to be custom made for your ear. And then the filter, another could be another $25, $30. Bucks. So yeah, you're talking about you know an investment of probably close to $200. But 
Your hearing is invaluable. It's a <laughs> heck of a lot cheaper than buying <laughs> hearing aids. You know, oh. if you think of it that way. Yes. Yeah. If you think of it that so, way. And and it's definitely lots of studies are showing kids have hearing loss, teenagers have hearing loss already. And the problem is you don't notice it until it's too late, right? Until the damage has been done, um, until you age and you start to depend more and more on your ability to hear and discriminate speech because that ability decreases as we get older. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. s- I'm gonna say this now, but I I don't I want us to cover it later. Okay, so I want us to cover headphones and particularly earbuds because earbuds right now you know everybody's got a pair of Bluetooth earbuds, right? And so I feel like that should be part of this conversation somewhere, right? So I'm not gonna say ask for it right now. Okay. But maybe can we cover it somewhere in Topic yeah. of the Week? We'll cover it there. All right. Um, streaming. Streaming. I'm doing two. I'm streaming Attorney Wu. It's a Korean series. Okay. And there's a big problem with that series. It's a Korean series, which means it has subtitles. Oh, and these people can talk faster than I can read. Oh, well, I don't know. And so it's okay if I'm not eating or doing something that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a person who is multitasking frequently. And so if I'm also eating and watching TV, I can't do Attorney Wu because it takes 110% of my attention. But Attorney Wu is a young woman who has high-functioning autism. And um, it's just phenomenally acted. I mean, you just want to look at this woman and how she portrays this. It's fantastic. Um, And so the the stories are good. I like it. I'm somewhere about three quarters of the way, and there's a storyline. It's going to end sometime, but that's a great story. And the other one, if I just want to veg out, The Crown. Okay. The Crown. There's a new... Um, episode, uh, there's a new um, season for The Crown, but in order to really ramp up the anticipation, I started reviewing the old series. So um, I'm watching old episodes, knowing that it's going to end with this new um, season. Who is Attorney Wu streaming through? Netflix. It's on Netflix? Netflix, yeah. Okay. I, I provide, yes, Netflix. I won't say anything more about Netflix. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I think it's just gotten more expensive, but then my family gets the benefit of watching Netflix in um, on my account in the Netherlands and in Australia. Uh, so. Fair enough. Fair enough. There's an advantage uh, If there. Netflix is out there listening, that was not. We're, we're yes, that, they're that, family. That, oh, yeah. family plan. Legal. Legal. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> oh, God. I just know Netflix. Can you edit this out? I didn't see, I didn't see this is twice. <laughs> and I, the cash does no editing. Um, you, we, I just know that there have been those new articles that they're cracking down, cracking down, cracking down. And so uh, I don't know what that looks like or what that means. And all I can say is, like, uh, I am also blessed uh, that that my daughter uh, still has her billing address to this address. And that's that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> I have a son who does that too. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, shop local. Oh, my shopping local is the food co-op. I've been a huge co-op um, advocate. I've been very active in the fundraising and the initial rolling out of the co-op. And um, we are really actively making it our first go-to store for shopping. It's local. It's um, uh, organic. It's small. It's fantastic. It's a small store, so I can zip in and zip out. I like that part. Yes. I know the people who work there. They know me. Don't know why, but they do. (laughs) And so, you know, so yeah, the food co-op. I, yes. You know, we're big fans of the food co-op. And uh, the people associated with that, uh, big shout out to Brenda, of course. And uh, 
they just have cool stuff in there. Cool stuff in there. You have to take your time to walk through the aisles. They're different. It's right. different products, different jams or jellies or crackers than you've been used to. So you have to just kind of one by one try new different things. You can't just walk in there and make it your store, right. I but, think. And their produce is fire. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my wife ranted and raved. She just picked up these, uh, I think these uh, tangerines from there, and she just has been ranting and raving about these tangerines to the point that she took the time to go uh, message someone from the store and be like, uh, or associated with the store, and be like, "Hey, I just want you to know that these tangerines are fire." And I was like, "Good lord, seriously!" <laughs> they have the cute little mangoes, not the big ones that look nice, but the smaller mm-hmm. mangoes. Yeah. And I've not had a bad one yet. Oh. So, another shout out. Bruh. I like it. Technology. Uh, oh. Uh, you know, well, I wrote down, you know, because I wrote notes. Because I knew you were going to ask me this. Um, I would like listeners to know how assistive listening technology can help people hear. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And Fair then enough. we'll talk about it when that topic comes up. Assistive listening technology. Okay. Fair. Community. I moved to Evergreen Retirement Community about five years ago. Oh, okay. And that was before I knew my daughter was going to go to Australia. And my son was teaching at MSOE in Milwaukee. So... Um, but I'm an avid gardener. It's a long story. I'm an avid gardener and I moved to this house in West Haven with a quarter, a third of an acre and I turned it into this garden with flowers and perennials and tulips and bark chips. I mean, 10 cubic yards of bark chips every spring every other spring in order to cover all the flower beds and it was beautiful had a water garden with two waterfalls and koi fish and it was just oh you went for it oh lovely you went went beautiful just you know people would come and look at the garden it was part of the gosh gosh garden tour one time um but i became a slave to my garden it took a lot of time. Yeah. Just a lot of to keep it and and it wasn't satisfying. I wasn't doing it because I hated it. I was doing it because I loved it. But then once I started doing more advocacy work for the Hearing Loss Association, it just I, I mean, then it became a chore. I had to go to the garden and quick do some stuff before I could go back to my computer and answer emails or, or write articles. And so we signed up. To move to Evergreen because they were building new um, apartments, an apartment building right off of Oshkosh Avenue. But when it came closer, and it was the time to start picking out the countertops and and the carpeting, I started getting cold feet. It's like, it's an apartment. I don't think I'm quite ready yet to give up all, you know, access to the, to my guard, to a garden. And they said, well, but we also have um, uh, condominiums. Village, they're called village units. They are um, um, buildings where eight, there's eight units to a building, kind of built in a U-shaped. And I said, well, that sounds like it might fit us better because then I'll still have a patio. I can still look outside. Anyway, to make a long story short, my name came up about four years before they said it was, they said it would take about four or five years before my name would come up to the top of the list. And a year and a half later, I get a phone call. We have a unit available for you. Wow. And so you get, you know, you get to look at the unit and you go, eh, this one isn't it. And you can literally decline and wait for another unit to open up. Well, the next one opened up and it overlooked the creek 
and the sledding hill and kind of we look south on Oshkosh West over Oshkosh uh, towards Oshkosh West has a garden I mean it was just a perfect place and we ended up moving to Evergreen and why am I bringing that up under the word community? Because you're you you are getting this little stare in your eyes look at this oh, very moment. No, Where no, is no. she going with this? No, hey, look, you I'm, ask community. All I do is I go along for the ride. <laughs> okay, okay. Evergreen is an incredible community to live. Mm. It's just. Um, it's so much more than I thought it would be. I thought it would be convenient living, no snow shoveling, not having to mow the grass, but I can still do a little landscaping around my deck, you know, my patio. But I've made so many friends, people who will call you. We haven't seen you in a while. Everything okay? Or, oh, you're back from your vacation to see your mom in the Netherlands? I made you a banana nut bread. Uh-oh. It's just, you know, you want to come over tonight and we'll play sequins. I mean, it's an incredible community. And um, that's the best part about living at Evergreen right now for us, other than, you know, the fact that I don't have to mow my lawn. I like that. Okay. Um, it's the conversation uh, me and my wife are having. Like, not evergreen, but just the concept of a condominium versus owning a home so you don't have to do those additional responsibilities. And, you know, I don't I don't think I'm ready. I think she's very ready. And uh, My husband wasn't ready. And he loves it. I think, of course, you get it out of it what you put into it so if you're going to move to a condominium get involved with the community or with the condo association or go to the events or make an effort to invite people um but i think americans and i'm generalizing here but i think americans are so sold on having their house with their yard and their driveway but i i I see so many more people have so many more conversations than I ever had living in my house, you know, on the west side in West Haven. Um, although in the summer that was easier, people were outside. But in the winter, you just don't see people. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'd be happy to, um, yeah, have that conversation off the air too. You know, it's, it's, it's I think condominium is underrated in this country. Um, I'm not against it. I just want the right one. Mm -hmm. Like um, at this particular point, and and I'll share some of my pickiness about some of this is, um, you know, even though I've lived in Oshkosh a a long time, multiple decades at this point, um, you know, who your neighbors are is very important to me. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, I happen to be a black man. So then <laughs> there, you might Gosh. not have noticed. I'm just saying. But I, I feel like I need to share that sometimes. No. <laughs> but those things all come into play as to where I want to live because I just want to feel um, home, normal, yeah. like everyone else. I just yeah. want to be yeah. um, just everyone else. I don't want any special or unwarranted any attention no. i just want to and like uh, where i live right now i get that from my neighborhood my neighborhood is a very people it's so working class people are too busy to worry about what anyone else is doing or what they and, look like or what they look like or anything like that like they just don't care like we do and I've, a and I've lived, I've owned my home for a couple of decades here, and so you know I'm pretty comfortable walking up and down yep. my block, and, yep. and we know yep. a number of people because of Bosco the podcast dog is like uh, the neighborhood walking dog because he he feels like he must share his duties on everybody's <laughs> lawn at some point. Um, so uh, we we've definitely 
people just look out the window and they're like, oh, yeah, that's by a score of them. <laughs> they don't know us. He knows you're going to pick it up, too, right? Oh, we're so solid. Okay. Yeah, right. like, I'm pretty, I'm very particular and paranoid about that whole thing. Like, yep. I don't want to be, you don't want to be the people who didn't pick. You know, there is a podcast episode about picking up dog poop. <laughs> well, I missed a, that one. Oh, you need to check that one okay. out. There's a conversation. That, and it's about people who don't do it in the park. Oh. Yeah, that's just frustration. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. And so um, for me to make that next community move um, and because of who I feel lives in condos, I need to make sure that community is ready for me. True. True. And, and that I think you're going to get from word of mouth from people, you know, who live in certain areas um, and I certainly, over the years, had seen, I don't want to exaggerate, but probably tens, maybe 50 clients who lived at Evergreen who were my patient in my audiology practice. Mm. And so they always spoke of Evergreen as, oh, it's a fantastic place to live. I should have moved there sooner. I love it there. Great friends, you know. And so those are the kinds of recommendations that you're looking for, of right. course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can't help you there. You can't help me on that one? Fair okay. enough. Okay. Yeah, but evergreen. All right. Evergreen. Kosh Hidden Gems. Oh, I have two. Um, the first one is, I'm back to Evergreen. God, it's like an Evergreen advertisement. Um, did you know Evergreen has a restaurant? No. Yes. Oh. So it's called um, River, no, Gardenside Restaurant. Oh. And of course, during the pandemic, it was closed. Oh. But you can eat there. You can just come into Evergreen and eat at the restaurant. I would say look it up. I mean, their hours, I think right now, are 11 till 7, um, 11 in the morning. So there's no breakfast. They used to have breakfast. Um, I think it's 11 to 7. And um, on Sundays, they have a phenomenal prime rib. Uh-oh. Very affordable. I've had more prime rib um, since I've moved to Oshkosh than I ever had in the rest of those 35 years before. Um, great staff, great desserts, very reasonably priced, and no tipping. Oh. No tipping. So um, that would be my one gem. Oh, well, we're going to put that in the podcast notes because I think people want, yeah, I'm. that might happen today. <laughs> Yes, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. Oh, and the other one also involves, um, so there is a, um, you know what, I don't even know what it's called, but there's a hiking path around the creek, around, so if you come on Westfield, you know, where there is the disc golf game, you can park right there. Okay. And then you walk a little north over the creek and you hang a right. There's a path. It's an oak savanna, and every season it changes. It walks, you can walk along the creek, um, basically south of Evergreen. Um, in the spring, there's thousands of spring, spring flowering, flowering bulbs. Um, in the spring, you'll see all these guys walking in the creek trying to find the discs that they've lost. Right, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always fun to, oh, it's springtime because there's people in the creek looking for discs. Um, there's wildlife. I mean, you will think you are not in Oshkosh. Wow. And I bet you've never walked there. Nope. That's another, well, maybe, yeah, it's a little cold today. Yeah, the, the, it's look, a little cold. Put the, it on your spring list things to do uh, well you know i'm gonna hold you to it yes. like, you're gonna have to reach back out in the spring and be like all right i, I will uh, we'll do a hike along the river there fantastic. lots of birds lots of herons and wood ducks and um and the wildlife around there we have a fox we have deer we have um 
oh my God, I'm so terrible with words. Um, papa, I'm having a blonde moment, gray moment, actually. Uh, but just take my word for it. There's a lot of wildlife. Fair enough. Possums. Oh. The word just came to me. Possums. Possums. And they walk along the condos, and you just see them waddle over the patios. Um, it's just lovely. It's it really, we've had uh, wild um, turkeys. Um, and, and the reason I know that is I have windows in the bedroom that I don't close. I don't close the curtains at night. Uh, I mean, who's going to look in, right? It's kind of a wooded area. But I see all the wildlife come by. I don't sleep well. That's also the reason I listen to your podcasts. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll take that. Uh, and I will admit, sometimes they put me to sleep, but it's a good thing. It's because it's such Bruh. a... No, no. Yeah. It's, it's conversation, yeah. but enough that I it lets my mind wander, and then, then, I just, and then, bit. then I start it up again the next night where I left off. Hey, you know what? I get that, because that's actually how I listen to things. Like, um, they, if especially later in the day, I... I'm in it until I'm not, and then I crash, and then I come yep. back, and I finish yep. it, like, the next day. I do, too. So that's exactly how I listen yeah. to you. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. What's so those are my two gems. All right. What's the cash need? I think, and, uh, and, and coming from a person who doesn't own a dog, but I think the cash needs more dog parks. Oh. I oh. mean... I Bruh. just pity all these dogs who have to be walked on leashes. I mean, that's because I moved here from the Netherlands, and we have a fair amount, believe it or not, open space where dogs can walk. Maybe dogs are better behaved in the Netherlands. I don't know. But I just think you ought to be able to walk with your dog, not on a leash, and just have him stay with you well, or her. I, I think that is a training component um and i like the concept except for <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now there's no way i'm walking bosco the podcast dog without a leash because his little old naughty self follows his nose he is that dude he his nose him and that nose and yeah like i feel like bosco secretly has some beagle in him because he just once that nose is going you can't stop him can't stop him He's following uh, the nose. He's following well, the nose. Well, that and, dog park is not for Bosco. And he gets spooked, like loud noises. Like uh, like right now during hunting season and you hear the pop-pops uh, and stuff. Like he, yep. he's not a, yep. like, so I, what I'm going to say is he's got really good hearing and a really good nose. And those things keep him from being uh, able to not be on a leash. Not not be on a leash. Right, because uh, okay. without it, he'd be ghost. He'd yep. be like... Phew. Got it. But yeah. there's plenty of dogs that are well-behaved. You got that right. And um, I just, I think it's just something that Oshkosh could benefit from. Maybe yeah. on the west side. There's nothing on the west side for dog owners to walk their dogs kind of out in the open. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's only one dog park that I'm aware of. Yeah. The one at... Um, yep. At, at the county park. No. All right. I like that. So how about you? You have any things that the cash needs? Um, what I will say is the things that I think the cash needs are things that I think the cash is already working on. Cool. Yeah. I think um, we've got good planners and good vision right now and the direction of things things that are getting built and housing and um the the redesign and upgrades being done um in the downtown district uh, the new businesses being open the area across um heading into south main um i just think there's a lot of good stuff happening so yeah, what right. i will say is before i say what we need i'm going to see what we're going to finish doing cool all right cool um Naughty slash Harold's Corner. This is your opportunity to nominate something, someone. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be an organization. It could be a thing. It could be a scenario. What do you have? Heroes? Well, there is a small group of people in the Appleton area, but I happen to be on the board. It's a small foundation called Here in the Fox Cities. 
And that small organization helps fund hearing aids for children who fall outside of the insurance or Medicaid cracks. Oh, I love this. It's awesome. Okay. It's awesome. And I think we have now funded hearing aids for 25 or 26 children. Um, frequently, these are kids where the parents may have insurance, but their deductible is very high. Right. They have no insurance. We just got a request two days ago for a little girl with one-sided hearing loss, and there is an option to correct that for a child with a hearing device. And that device costs $2,700. These are recent but. immigrants. There's just no way that these parents can afford this. And then our group steps in. Oh, my God, that's so fantastic. It is awesome. It's awesome. And these kids, if you Google here in the Fox Cities or on Facebook, um, the parents give permission to share photographs of these kids. So you see the kids with their hearing aids. They get to choose their own colors. They're blue. They're packer green with yellow ear molds. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes here for the listener. Um, but, I mean, it's just awesome. And this small group... Um, we do a music event, um, Life is Meant to be Heard, um, with oh, another word-finding problem. Anyway, we've done a couple. We skipped it last year just because of the pandemic and trying to pull this together. But um, I'm sure this summer we're going to have another event and um, we do a little fundraiser. We do a little silent auction um, we have musicians from Appleton who come and uh, provide music free of charge. The kids show up with their hearing aids. The parents help out. I mean, it's just, it's a small community. And what we all uh, share is our love for helping kids hear or parents, you know, being grateful for the support that they've gotten from us. If somebody wants to support this organization, how they, how can they go about doing that? Because uh, I, I think this is probably, you say it's small, but we know there's a lot of people out there. And so yeah. um, what I have found is somebody who works at Apple 10 and works with a lot of nonprofits is a lot of times people just don't know what they don't know. No. All right. So like, how do we learn more no. or, and, or let's say somebody wants to support it. Maybe we have a cash listener out there that's like, oh my God, yes. This is something I want to support or I want to fund a hearing aid for a child. Uh -huh. um, here in the Fox Cities, if you Google here in the Fox Cities, we have a small website. I think there's a donate button right on the website. Um, um, and otherwise they can contact me. Uh, we'll put my email in the podcast notes, notes in yep. the podcast notes, and I'm happy to uh, to facilitate this. Okay, and we'll also make sure that we put this website in the podcast notes too. Cool. All right. Very cool. All right. Okay, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Uh, let's go. Hi. I'm Dawn Gulke, the Executive Director of CASA of the Fox Cities. Science proves that one consistent adult can change the story of a child. Could that one person be you? Become a court-appointed special advocate. Build a relationship with a child, help identify their needs, and give that child a voice in a process that can otherwise feel lonely. Contact us today. Children who have experienced abuse and neglect can't wait. Learn more about Casa of the Fox Cities at casafc.org or call Leah at 920-257-4733. Okay, we are back. And we are going to get into the most important part of the show. Every time. I don't care. Every time we play it, it just feels fantastic. It does. I don't know. It just does. It gets you ready, right? You get geeked about, hey, it's, the, it's time for topic of the week. And once again, uh, Kosh listeners, the topic of the week is always, well, usually, 
I'm not going to say always because there's a couple of times I actually, actually pick the topic of the week, but the topic of the week is usually picked by our guest. And this week's topic of the week is Juliet hearing loops. All right. And I've learned a little bit about hearing loops. I don't think everyone knows what a hearing loop is. So can you share? Yes. Yes. So a hearing loop is an assistive listening system. I already remember I mentioned assistive listening technology a little bit earlier in the podcast. It's a technology that broadcasts audio wirelessly into hearing aids. Um, If the facility uses a PA system and has a loop installed. So, um, and just to kind of, for the listener, give this uh, maybe an explanation, um, a hearing loop is a wire that gets installed either in the floor uh, or in the ceiling of a room, and it gets fed the audio from the PA, from the microphone. So if there's a microphone on the stage or on the lectern or on the podium, that audio doesn't only go to the PA system, to the speakers, but also goes to a hearing loop amplifier. And that amplifier pushes a current through the wire, and that in turn creates changes in the magnetic field that a very small antenna inside a hearing aid can pick up wirelessly. So you can be anywhere in the room, anywhere in the house of worship, anywhere in the performing arts center, and turn that feature on in your hearing aid. You either need a hearing aid or a headphone listening device, and you can hear the audio as if you are this close to the microphone um, on the podium or on the lectern, or of the Broadway singers that they're wearing on the stage. I I learned about it um, when I was at UW Oshkosh, because I know um, some of the new spaces when I was at UW Oshkosh, they had put in the ability for hearing loops, I think, yep. in some of the uh, the big ballroom. Uh, I don't know if it's at the Culver Center, it but is. maybe. Okay. It is. Yeah. I was going to assume that they probably, since that's newer too, uh, that they probably included it there. And I know that uh, it's technology that at City Hall at Appleton, that has now also been included there in its remodeling process. Yeah, it's um, it, it involves installing wiring. And of course, that's a lot easier done during construction, during remodeling, when you're getting new carpeting. Um, But it can also be fairly easy. St. Mary's here in Oshkosh has a loop. And rather than the loop being laid out in the sanctuary, it is uh, installed against the ceiling of the basement. Oh. And because it's a magnetic field, it's uh, it's changes in the magnetic field, that hearing loop signal radiates into the sanctuary but will also radiate into the lower level. So literally, the signal will work in both places. But it's always one signal. It's one frequency. Now, that's smooth. Um, Who else around here has uh, taken the time to do these? Well, the good news is uh, there was only one um, house of worship. It was the Unitarian Church in Appleton that had had a loop for probably 35, 40 years. Oh, oh so this is a new technology. Oh, no, no. It's been around for 50, 60 years. Wow. Okay? That's, that's interesting. And what's, well, and so is your wine glass. You know, it's been around for a few <laughs> centuries. <laughs> still works. Um, but a hearing loop. So let me back up. In this country, we have a law, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, and that law, in effect, mandates um, accessibility in public places. Um, Correct. And that means for people in wheelchairs. That's e- everybody understands that. It should be a wheelchair ramp or it should be a, um, a, a curb cut, right, in order to be able to move around in a city. Um, and it may be Braille signs on a door or it might be the light switch at the right height so that somebody who is in a wheelchair is able to reach it. But for people who are hard of hearing, accessibility is done through assistive listening systems. 
So wherever a facility uses a PA system, it's mandated that an assistive listening system be installed. And for years, we've let audio engineers make those decisions. So an audio engineer um, who is installing a PA system in a big library meeting room um, in, used to install an FM system. And an FM system will broadcast a signal into the room. But now you've got to go to the service desk to pick up a listening device with headphones. Right. And those devices have to be maintained. Um, the batteries have to be charged or replaced. Um, they have to kept, be kept clean. I mean, you know, essentially you're putting something on your ears that somebody else has had on his ears. Right. And um, in, in reality, these systems weren't used much. Theaters used infrared systems, um, not FM systems. Um, but about 12, 13 years ago, well, and let me back up. These systems were already in use in the schools for the deaf and the hard of hearing in the Netherlands when I was doing my student teaching in the late 70s. Wow. They, so, so all the kids in the hard of hearing classroom, the teacher would say, I'm going to talk. You know, turn your hearing aid to telecoil. You need what is called a T-coil or a telecoil in your hearing aid. And telecoils have been in hearing aids for 40 years, 50 years, if yeah. not longer. And if you switch your hearing aid to the T-coil mode, you can now pick up what's coming through the loop. And um, in, in Oshkosh, um, and I had a pr also a practice in Nina, um, I tried my darndest to get my clients who come. So because hearing aids don't give you normal hearing, right. we already talked about that. To overcome these shortcomings, assistive listening systems can help you hear better in places where hearing aids are unable to deliver. And that means going to the PAC and going to the service desk and pick up a listening device or going to the library and asking for a headphone set. Well, you know what? My patients didn't do that. They didn't bother. Too much hassle, right? They've already spent money on hearing aids. They think hearing aids ought to do everything. Everything. For they, the hey, for the cost, I'm not I'm not mad at their thought process. No. <laughs> no, and perhaps they weren't educated by the provider that these hearing aids are still going to have limitations. They find out in a hurry, but hearing aids have limitations. And so to overcome these limitations, you need to use an assistive listening device. Well, if that involves going to a service desk, picking something up, sitting down, finding out the battery doesn't work, getting up, going back, saying, I want a different one, or this one cuts in and out, the headphones don't work. And so... I tried. My patients wouldn't bother. I gave lectures. I did workshops, how to hear your best. And my patients would go, oh, it's only an hour. It's okay. You know, I'm all right in church. It's, and I'm, I'm, I'm all right. And in 2008, I heard that hearing loops were making a comeback. And I heard this from a college professor um, from Michigan at a lecture. And I'm sitting in the back of the room timber and i'm just going oh my god that's the missing link right if i can make my patients here in the places where they have the most trouble and i make that one of their best places to hear right they're gonna love me to death oh facts they're gonna Bruh. think that <laughs> i've solved i finally solved their problem yeah. they really came to me because they can't hear at saint raves and when they got hearing aids, guess what? They still couldn't hear at St. Rafe's. Right. And so then that puts doubt. It, it's just, and then the hearing industry plays into this with all the advertising going, uh, you know, you need a newer hearing aid. You need a more technologically advanced hearing aid. But in the end, it is not the hearing aid. It's this, the, the, the input the clarity of the input that you can get into the hearing aid to hear your best. And that means with hearing aids, you're always going to hear better when people are closer than when they're further away. Right. And in a large facility, 
you must use assistive listening technology. For TV, you need to use a TV transmitter. And in the car, you can even use a little remote mic. I mean, I love that kind of technology. But you can't put a remote mic on your parish priest, you know, lapel. There's going to be 10 microphones hanging there. So the, the hearing loop allows anybody in a house of worship to turn their T-coil on and hear as if they are inches away from the mouth of the presenter, of the presider. And I started advocating for loops late 2008, because you said how many loops are there in the, in the Fox Valley. Um, believe it or not, the Fox Valley is the most looped area in the country. What? Bruh. Seriously? Yes. It's sad. In, in a way, it's sad, because this ought to be everywhere, right? Right. Every bed, everywhere where people go to listen and where a PA system is in use, they ought to have a loop installed. Um, but I've been very successful in Oshkosh. It started all in Oshkosh because guess where my patients went to church? Guess where they went to lectures at the university for learning and retirement, right? They go to the library. They go to the funeral home at Seafelds. They go to places, and these loops got installed, and it blew my patients away. They could hear uh, right. with the hearing aids that I so carefully fit, but I could never give them normal hearing with. And so, you know, my personality, you've probably already figured this out. I don't want to just to talk about the Instant Pot. I want to teach you how to use the Instant Pot. I want you to become an evangelist like I am, right? And so I started telling my patients, my patients stepped forward. One of my patients helped fund and helped fundraise for the loop at the Performing Arts Center. Mm. It was unbelievable, the support that came from people who kind of complained about the high cost of hearing aids and then turned around and paid for a loop in their church. Just phenomenal. And once that word gets out, Sister Pam over in the Catholic Church in Winnicani and Amro, her patients were telling her about how well they could hear in the loop. So then Sister Pam talks to other uh, priests or oh, other yeah. nuns. Oh, yeah. And that's how the word gets out, right? Um, one of the first churches in Oshkosh that got a loop was um, Calvary Lutheran and Timber. I am in the church. The loop gets turned on, and in the facility is a really dear patient, Russ. And Russ is very hard of hearing. And I see Russ turn around, and I'm going, yep, yep, yep. You know, I make the motion of, of turning on the telecoil in the hearing aid. And Russ turns on the telecoil in his hearing aid, and his head goes up, and he goes, whoa! I can really hear now! <laughs> Through the church. Now, at that oh point, God, he couldn't hear bro. his own voice, so he didn't know that he was talking loud. I'm looking over at my husband, who installed the loop, by the way, and he's crying. I'm crying. I mean, if I can make Russ here, I can make anybody here, right? And so, you know, that whole advocacy for hearing loops grew into I got to teach fellow professionals. I got to teach audiology students. I got to teach every... I've given lectures to ministers. I've given lectures to librarians. Um, you know, basically, basically anybody who will listen. Because people don't understand that hearing aids don't give you normal hearing. They think that the hearing aid should basically do what eyeglasses do, and they don't. And the hearing loop can overcome that limitation in these places. They, they even work at um, information booths. They can work in taxi cabs. Oh you God. go to London, every London taxi cab has a hearing loop installed. Wait, so you can, like, it can be mobile. 
It can be mobile. The wiring is installed in the back seat of the taxi, and there's a microphone in front of the taxi, in front of the window. Remember, there's glass between the driver and you. Right. And so that microphone is pointing right at the um, driver in the car. Right. And if you turn your hearing aid to T-coil, you can hear the driver as if you're sitting next to him. Where are... That's fascinating. Okay, I think that is brilliant because then I'm thinking of like trains and buses, particularly buses. It's happening. It's happening in the buses? Yes, there is some experiments going on in New York City. So a lot of this is moving forward with word of mouth. Right. You know, advocates, people who hear this message and go, whoa, why don't we have this in a bus or yeah. in a tram? Um all the trams in Ireland, or at least the ones in Dublin, have hearing loops installed. Oh. The new BART train cars in uh, San Francisco have hearing loops installed. And they're now looking to install loops um, in ferries going from New Jersey to New York. Uh, partially because there's such an, uh, an active, hard-of-hearing community that is advocating for the technology that's helping to get the word out. Um, is it expensive to put in a hearing ah, loop? Good question. I mean, uh, relatively. Relative, no. The short answer is no. I mean, you can loop um, uh, probably a taxi cab for a thousand dollars. You know, so by the t in the long run, it, it, how expensive is it to put a wheelchair ramp in? Do you ever worry about that? Uh, I don't think you get the choice. It's you just got to be done. Exactly. You shouldn't have the choice, right? What's ha what is unfortunate, because when, you, when people or listeners are going to do their research, they're going to go, oh, but I've been reading. You can provide assistive listening with Bluetooth technology. Yeah, well, I've... That's... I've, yeah. Crossed your mind, it, right? Well, yeah. Well, it, it's, I've just noticed, I, I can't say like it's crossed, crossed my mind, but I've noticed that more there's with the advertising of um, uh, earpieces, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. hearing aids, like there's more of this thing that they're Bluetooth. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I am a huge proponent of Bluetooth. Anybody who buys a hearing aid ought to get the hearing aid equipped with Bluetooth technology, even though it's... It's a proprietary form of Bluetooth. It's not a Bluetooth 5.1 or 5.2. Um, because tiny little hearing aids um, cannot receive that signal. It, it's the, the manufacturers have found a workaround to do that. But here's the problem. Bluetooth has an audio delay. So it's okay to use Bluetooth technology for streaming sound of your TV right. or from um, a fitness club right. or a sports bar. But to do this real time for live performances, it needs to be technology where there is no audio delay. And audio over Wi-Fi inherently comes with delays, and it's even worse so if that delay is being routed through an Android phone. iPhones have less latency issues than Android phones. Um, and it becomes very complicated for the user to pair and link and make this all work. Um, and I'm thinking in particular of my mother, who's 95, who uses hearing aids, who can go to a crematorium, and turn on the telecoil and hear just fine, but it doesn't have the wherewithal to pair and to find an audio stream on her phone and somehow link it and have it then broadcast to her hearing aids. So Bluetooth has its place, but not for public assistive listening systems at the moment. Got it. There is talk of an updated Bluetooth LE, low energy. And that's been called AuraCast. 
And AuraCast is going to be the next generation Bluetooth technology. That means you, when you get a new telephone, when you get a new TV, when you get a new laptop, and they all have that feature built in, right. pairing and linking is supposed to be a lot easier. Kind of seamless. And it's supposed to be seamless. Right now, every make, every model hearing aid, there's some issues Every right. model phone, there's issues. Right. Talk to an audiologist who fits hearing aid, and they will tell you that dealing with smartphones and hearing aids has been difficult, to say the least. Let me ask this question. Um, so, let's say you have a loved one who has hearing challenges, right? Yep. Could you do something like put a hearing loop in your house and then... Like have and put some type of collared microphone scenario, like a you know like like an, an uh, somebody on TV a newscaster wears, and then have the clarity of speaking to them because I'm what I'm thinking of right now is like where don't we have this technology? Like where are the places like that yeah. that can it can be done, but they just haven't thought about it yet, or you know because. I'm a firm believer you don't know what you don't know. That's right. But once you know, then all of a sudden it's like, why am I going to continue to yell at my spouse? Yep. I will spend the money and pay for this yep. uh, this hearing loop to be put in this house, and I will put this little microphone on me so he can hear me really clearly. No, I'm <laughs> just playing y'all. <laughs> now, there's a difference between hearing and listening. To uh, her. Hey, look, I'm I'm the master. <laughs> Because I can, I can tune to my wife will tell you real quick. I, I selectively listen to a lot of different things. Yeah, so the short answer is yes, you can put a loop in your house. Um, and that's um, fairly economical. Um, I've even been very fortunate in finding some loops on eBay. Oh. Um, or at least the loop driver, and then there are some websites where you can go to get information. But it's the sound input. You know, what's the sound that's going into the loop that you want your loved one to hear? So it works extremely well for television. Um, but so do new hearing aids with little Bluetooth transmitters. Got it. And, and so if a user is pretty adept at using a smartphone and the app on the smartphone that goes with the hearing aids, um, sometimes that's easier than putting a loop in the house. But if you have two hearing aid users or three, there's families where there's two kids with hearing loss and mom uses hearing aids, then having one loop can let everybody hear. By the way, it will also transmit the sound upstairs. So that if you have a loop in your house and you're watching videos and you don't want your kiddos upstairs to hear, um, you need to make sure that you turn your loop off before you start watching the videos. And, and these are real stories. I've had mothers tell me about the fact that their kids were giggling and laughing because they could hear the loop upstairs in their hearing aids while mom and dad were downstairs. Oh. Um, but so... Putting a loop in your house can be done. Not super expensive. $200, $300 new. Um, use the uh, audio out or you use the optical out from your television. And you can then switch your hearing aid to T-coil. But what you were saying, you wanted to have a microphone input to the loop so that he or she could hear your voice or the voice of the person who's talking. It's just my thought process. Yeah. Um, that becomes more difficult because it's a hardwired system. It's okay. not a wireless system, but new hearing aids. So if there's listeners sitting, you know, I have a mom who has hearing loss and she has trouble hearing me while I'm in the car. You don't put a loop in the car. You run back to your audiologist, ask if there is a remote microphone available. It's okay. a Bluetooth microphone. Right. And on one charge will work an hour, hour and a half, so you can make a car trip and clip that on your lapel and your mom can hear you as if you're just inches from you as opposed to across from the chair in the car. Got it. So that's possible. Um, 
the 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 trying to get a good sound input in the loop would require also a wireless microphone and then it becomes a little bit more tricky it can be done with a hardwired microphone and i know people who've done this okay we've covered a lot we've covered a lot i think if your listeners walk away with you know i know somebody who has trouble hearing and this is information that they can benefit from i've reached my goal that's uh let's let's make sure let's i'm gonna put it out there kosh listeners you know if you know people with hearing challenges uh let's get them this episode and then we will have various contact information inside of there because um it's amazing that we've got an expert in our region in the kosh i am known as the national hearing loop advocate you know they give you a really fancy name when they don't pay you anything <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how right. that works. <laughs> but yeah, I do this around the country. And some of my lectures are online. So if people are interested in more information, they can either contact me um, and I can steer them through some recordings. Okay. That's fantastic. Oh, Any last things you'd like to share with the listeners? Maybe about the holidays. You know, if people have trouble, if they know someone's going to come for the holiday, for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, and they know they have trouble hearing, be considerate. Um, hearing aids help you hear better. Do not give you normal hearing. Uh, when you're trying to talk to someone, try to turn down the background noise, look at people, get their attention. Mom, mom, would you like a little bit more stuffing? But don't say, would you like more stuffing, mom? Because she'll hear the mom part, but she won't have heard the first thing you said. Um, maybe create a little quieter area where people can go to visit with somebody who has trouble hearing and ask, what can I do to help you hear better today? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I think that sums it up. No kidding. That's fantastic. All right. We're going to start transitioning, Kosh listeners, and start winding down. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your time, spending it with us. I think this week's topic is so relevant on so many accounts. So hopefully it'll be beneficial. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to be a Kosh guest uh if you've got you know, however you want to connect with the show um if you've got shout outs whatever it is please feel free to reach out to us at ask the kosh at gmail.com once again that is ask the kosh at gmail.com uh, once again since the holiday season is coming up i would also like to encourage you hey send out some holiday well wishes here on the kosh please feel free we've got a voicemail number that number is 920 three eight five nine two nine eight once again uh nine two zero three eight five nine two nine eight i will say that i've been getting some contacts people have been suggesting uh who the next guest should be and so we've got some lists on who our next guest should be um we're gonna do some shout outs up on that um and then kosh listeners you know what i need i need your help i need you to help raise the profile Share the podcast with your friends and family, but also go out there on um, Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts or however you listen and just give us a rating, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, give us a review. Let us know how we're doing out here. We want to do better. We want to grow. Uh, we feel like we've got something really special here for the community. So uh, don't hesitate to uh, share this resource. All right. Now, you know what? It's my favorite. Now, this is my personal favorite time of the show, and that is it is shout out time. All right, time to get the shout outs in. So, Juliet, who who we oh, shout out? I've got some lists. Oh, I have please, a good I love friend. This. I have a good friend, Chris Prust, who has been kind of with me. Um, in my hearing loop advocacy, she's hard of hearing, wears two cochlear implants, 
and has traveled frequently with me, gone with me, spoken about hearing loop. So I want to shout out to Chris. Um, I have uh, another friend, Deb Labley. She and her husband have been swim team parents for 12 years. And they mm-hmm. just closed the, the final kid, the third kid, three, four, in the swim team. And um, I know what it takes to be a good swim parent, the timing, the endless driving, the going to meets, the noise, um, and that they've done this for 12 years is just terrific. Um, I have a great friend in Appleton, Barb Mary, and her husband, Chuck. They have just made a huge donation to the Performing Arts Center to make it and to keep it more accessible for people with hearing loss, kids with autism, uh, people with vision difficulties. So um, shout out to them and their really generosity. Um, a shout out to the Women Who Care in Oshkosh. It's a small gift-giving circle. And I think we've now donated over $180,000 back into the community to small organizations, um, nonprofits. And I belong, and I tell you, I go to these meetings and I cry my heart out because there's such a need. Um, And it's just lovely to talk to people who are just as passionate as I am um, about uh, their organizations. And last but not least, the volunteers at the Oshkosh Food Co-op and um, the people I uh, associate with, Susie Vetti and Brenda Haynes and um, Cynthia Thorpe. I mean, these women have worked tirelessly to make the co-op a success. And um, it's a work in progress, but I think we're going to get there. So, yeah, I think that's it. That was my list. I like it. Good. You you came ready. Yeah, I came prepared. Are yeah. you kidding? Yeah, that's what's up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this week's shout outs. Uh, my shout outs, uh, big shout out to Indus. I got an opportunity to go to their their banquet, their annual banquet, which hasn't been uh, being, being had for a couple of years. But uh, they had an amazing banquet last night. Let me just say it was phenomenal. Uh, just the work that Indus does. Um, for, for the Indian community, for the general community, uh, how they sponsor other nonprofits and just other programming and initiatives. Um, and, oh, my God, this banquet was spectacular. The food was fantastic. Um, the regalia that was worn was just, a, oh, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. just it was just beautiful and sharp. Uh, so big, big shout-out to Indus. Um, big shout-out to United Way. Um, I got an opportunity this past week to go – and tour the 211 call center. Yes, and if you don't know about the 211 program, mm, I'm going to try to get somebody here from the United Way, maybe do a Kosh episode, but 211, what an amazing resource that we have here in the region that I think a lot of us don't even know, but it covers all the other things that 911 kind of doesn't cover. Um, to serve our community and connect people with the resources that we have. And they have a huge database of resources. So um, we're going to work on that, but I got to actually tour to meet some of the people. So huge shout out to United Way A for welcoming me in, giving me an opportunity to that call center team. Wow. Wow. Um, That's top notch level service and caring. Um, And, uh, several of them were human services majors from the University of uh, UWO. So you got to give a shout out to the human services program also. Um, big shout out to Kim over at East Central. Um, thank you. That's what I'm going to say. I got an opportunity to sit down and uh, have an amazing conversation. Uh, yeah, thank you. And we can, we'll, we'll talk more about that later um, in another program. And to the MLK planning team uh, who's trying to get uh, the MLK program (laughs) ready for the city of Appleton. Uh, We're trying, we're going to put something on pretty fantastic this year. We're going to make that happen. Shout outs to Polly Mua um, and to Alicia Johnson, fellow uh, diversity, uh, equity and inclusion practitioners in the community who are going on to do other things. Um, I'm sad to lose you from the team but I know I can call you if I need you. So big, big shout outs to them. Um, Big shout out to UPS workers. 
big shout out. So, uh, and let me give you this right now. The wife gave me some some words of wisdom for y'all out there. A, order your stuff early. Number number one, because there's there's a, there is a workforce challenges. So, order your stuff early if you want it. Number two, turn your lights on for the drivers. They need to see addresses and where they're dropping the stuff off. If you're going to drop it, they need to know where to drop it off at. Be helpful to those drivers. And I don't want to just put it on UPS, but I want to put it out there. FedEx, uh, the the United States Postal Service, the uh, Amazon drivers, all of them, they all need your assistance this holiday season. Keep them safe, y'all. Keep them safe. Um, big shout out to Zach Zabel. Moving on to a new professional career. My man, thank you for everything you've done for our veterans. Um, and I think this new adventure is going to be amazing. Um, to section, uh, the three or the uh, section 208, 208 at the arena for her people. Um, if you don't know, we are the loudest and the best section. We are the section that boos. We will boo bad calls. We have no shame. We know it's not very Wisconsin nice, but, uh, we're about that life. That's who we are. So big shout out to my man, Tarman. Big shout out to my man, Sean, my fellow 208 people. And big shout outs to Sko Sassy and Mike Norton, former guests here on the Kosh, who have contacted me with their list of potential guests for future episodes. Uh, know that I'm going to reach out to some of them and uh, we'll see if there's a willingness. Love to have you. All right. I know I had a lot of shout outs, but we had to get that in. You were prepared too. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> okay. So we are at the last part of the show and that is parting words of wisdom. So this is your opportunity. You've got choices too. So there's an A, B, and a C. A, you can give our listeners a some parting words of wisdom. B, you could tell our listeners, what would yourself today share with your 12-year-old self? Or option C, all of the above. You can do both. So, Julia, what are you thinking? Okay. Well, my parting words of wisdom are to those listeners who are involved with diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to please consider adding the word accessibility. Short but sweet. Facts. That's. I. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. All right. What'd you think? I thought it went well. Me too. I think Good. it's fire up. So y'all. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. The cash. <laughs> <laughs>